Patch 13.9 has seen a few new junglers make their way to the top of the meta, and how strong is the Nico mini rework shortly after her release? We've got all this and much more to break down as we bring you guys a complete look at the solo queue tier list thanks to the help of our challenger players and analyzing the most recent data. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. So how is the Kale mini rework looking so far? Actually quite good, and if you're playing her optimally, the champ is back in a great spot. One thing we're noticing stat-wise with Kale is that Q Max is performing drastically better than E Max. It's about a 3% win rate difference right now with Q Max Kales winning 52% of the time and E Max winning at 49%. There are two variations to the Kale build you can look to run right now. The first being the standard Nash into Riftmaker and Robidons, which you could run every single game and be fine. Secondly, there's the situational Wits End Rush that does extremely well when you're laning into a magic damage top laner. Lethal Tempo is going to be the best keystone in most cases with the Resolve Tree for secondaries. If you're thinking of picking Kale up in 13.9, she's especially strong for the lower ranks due to her immense scaling power and will be placed in our top lane S tier. Now that Orn has made a charge back into meta and is on the verge of being the most played solo queue top laner, who can you play to take advantage of that? Fiora is a really good option and performs very well into Orn, at least compared to the majority of top laners, due to her ability to nullify much of Orn trading power with her W. The longer the game goes, the more favored it becomes for Fiora as well, since her true damage and healing potential will outlast Orn in those extended fights. Fiora is also a really good answer to other tanks like Scion and Cassanti, so she's definitely worth having as an option with the way the top lane meta is aligned. You'll find Fiora as one of the higher rated top laners in 13.9 placed in our S tier. For the complete top lane tier list, we are making a massive shuffle to the OP tier with Orn standing alone as the most powerful pick. If you guys didn't watch our previous tier list and are wondering why Orn has become so much stronger, it was due to a huge bug fix he got in 13.8. Orn, R, and E are no longer cleansable, which has amplified his teamfight presence even further. Now, this isn't to say the champs like Pantheon, Poppy, Mordekaiser, and Malphite are weak now. Orn is just on a level above all of them, which forces those four champs down into the S tier. Still great options, but just not as powerful as Orn. Our top three low elo recommendations for top lane include Malphite, Mundo, and Nasus. Fiora, Orn and Malphite are a few of the more optimal ban options. Nico Jungle has been seeing a lot of attention in solo queue and even by many pro players thus far in 13.9. The champion is performing abysmally stat wise, but with some optimization we can definitely see that improving over the next few patches. Lane ganks with minions are extremely strong and are very difficult for the enemy to play around, especially once you get level 6. One reason to why Nico's win rate may be so low is players just messing around with her new passive too much and using it for fun more often than actually using it practically. If you want to try out Nico Jungle, Here's what the optimal setup is looking like so far. Dark Harvest is the best keystone rune, along with inspiration for secondaries. As for the build, Rocket Belt is the most popular mythic, but Night Harvester is actually performing drastically better. You can look to try both and see which you prefer, but the standard core is either Rocket Belt or Harvester Rush into Shadow Flame second and Zhonya's third. We don't think Nico Jungle is as bad as her 40% win rate may suggest, as many pros are seeing great success with her, so we'll be placing the champ in our jungle B tier for now. Admittedly, our analysts did not see this one coming, as the buffs to Amumu have have seen the champion's win rate spike over 5%. That's just absolutely insane, and for a change that seemed quite small on paper, it's given Amumu a drastically stronger skirmish. W damage went up from 12 to 20 at rank 1, and because this is the amount of damage per W tick, if a fight lasts for a very long time and you're able to get upwards of 10 ticks off, the added damage is incredible. Master and above Amumu is still a pretty average pick, but for Diamond and Below, which is where we focus our tier list placements around, Amumu is now a top tier jungler for 13.9, moving from A into OP. The Belveth adjustments this patch have turned out very positively skewed so far. Early clear has become stronger at the expense of a slightly weaker late game, and Belveth is performing much better in 13.9 as a result. It's always more difficult to predict how impactful these damage buffs to monsters will turn out, but they've definitely impacted Belveth on a significant level this time around. Worth noting as well is that Belveth is actually performing exceptionally well against Kha'Zix in 13.9, and with Ka being one of the most played junglers, it's helped out Belveth a ton on the statistical front. We had left Belveth in our jungle S tier for the pre patch tier list, but we'll be giving her the extra push into the OP tier for the mid-patch update. Taking a look at the jungle tier list, our OP tier is comprised of Amumu, Belveth, Evelyn, Jarvan, and Kha'Zix. No matter what kind of jungler you like to play, there should be one that fits your style in the OP tier right now. Enjoy playing assassin junglers? You got Ka and Evelyn who are extremely strong. If you guys want to learn more about Kha'Zix, we have a brand new full game commentary on our website showcasing how strong the champ is after the buffs. One more of a tanky bruiser champ? Amumu is a no-brainer pickup after his buffs. For a potent skirmishing jungler, 
Spoiler, you've got Belveth looking down on everyone else. If early ganking is something you like to prioritize, look no further than Jarvan. Especially if you're in low elo, Amumu should be added to your champ pool if you want to climb, while Vi and Nocturne are also great low elo options. As for the best bands of the patch, Evelyn, Jarvan, and Kha'Zix are a few of the better options due to their power in the meta and very high play rates. If you guys have been following the pro scene as of recent, you'd be aware of the rise of Nautilus mid. Caps pulled it out at MSI and won both games on the pick. Abyssal Mask was recently buffed a few patches back, and it's the item being rushed on Nautilus mid to make him a really great answer to many AP heavy comps. For solo queue specifically, it's definitely more of a counter pick only kind of champ, as it's quite good into melees but struggles heavily into ranged. Going off some statistics in 13.9, Nod is seeing good results into Cat, Fizz, and Akali, but is losing heavily to Aurelian Soul, Ari, and Vagar. In the correct spots, the champion is definitely a solid pick, but due to his struggles in many ranged matchups, we will be placing Nod in our mid lane B tier. There really weren't any meta breaking changes to mid lane this patch, so let's take a look at the tier list. Nico has landed about where we expected for mid lane, being a solid A tier pickup. It's always hard to gauge the true power of a rework champion right after their release due to many new players skewing data, but Nico is definitely a powerful pick in the right hands. Most notable shift this patch was Fizz going from S into OP, which was a change we made in the pre patch tier list. Lichbane buffs have been really nice for Fizz, and he's currently the best solo queue assassin at the moment. One other mid who has seen a nice spike in power this patch is Talia. Nice quality of life buff to her ultimate that has seen her add a little over 1% to her overall win rate. S tier is where you'll find Talia on the mid lane tier list. Optimal low elo mid lane champs for the patch include Malzahar, Aurelian Soul, and Annie. Highest on the ban list for mid lane are Ari, Zed, and Fizz. A new trend we have seen emerging over the past few patches is Cull being picked way more often as a starting item on ADCs. Aphelios is one ADC many players have been running the item on in recent patches, but it's now spilled over to many more ADCs as well. We're seeing it much more commonly on ADCs who are more reliant on item spikes and come online super hard in the mid to late game. Zeri and Jinx are two ADCs that pros are really liking Cull on right now for that reason. Reason. It's not something you're going to want to take on more aggressive early game ADCs like Draven, Tristana, or Samira though. If you're playing a strong scaling ADC, and especially in a lane where you don't think there's going to be any kill threat, look to start Cull and accelerate into your mid game spike faster. For the ADC tier list, it's looking very similar to how we had it for pre patch, with Jinx, Karthus, and Kogma locking down OP tier spots. Nerf to Jinx landed exactly as we expected, not enough to push her out of meta as she continues to hold on to her OP tier position by a threat. 13.10 is going to be the massive shakeup patch for. ADC with all the item changes, so definitely be on the lookout for content in the next few weeks where we break down all the best new builds for ADCs. Top 3 low elo ADCs of the patch are Tristana, Misfortune, and Vagar. A few of the most ban worthy ADCs include Jinx, Zaya, and Draven. It was a rather uneventful patch for the support role, with Swain being the only champion changed and not seeing any significant rise in power. As a result, the tier list is looking exactly the same to where we had it in pre patch, with Janna, Rakan, Senna, Blitzcrank, and Melio being the most OP carries. Just like ADC, support has a ton of item changes planned for 13.10, so that is the patch we should see a really nice shift in the meta. Top 3 low elo support recommendations are Heimerdinger, Melio, and Zyra. Best bands of the patch include Rakan, Thresh, and Melio. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So that's going to wrap everything up for the 13.9 mid-patch tier list update. Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck in solo queue, and we'll see you in the next one.